Okay, so today I'm going to be doing a review for two books that I recently read, Instructions for Dancing by Nicola Yoon, which is a romance, I think it's YA, the main character is 18, so I don't know. And The Humans by Matt Haig, which is an adult sci-fi book. So uh, both of these are going to be spoiler free, so you're free to hang out for the whole thing, but if you want one book more than the other, time stamps in the description to jump around. We're going to start with Instructions for Dancing. So. This is a really adorable romance. Um, our main character, I believe her name is Evie, she has always loved reading, and reading has always been kind of this, um, I don't know, very restful, escaping, fun, joyful experience for her, but she's fallen out of love with reading. One of the reasons is because romance was her favorite genre, and romance is dead, according to her. Her parents recently had a divorce, and uh, she walked in on her dad cheating, so she thought that her parents were the greatest love and she modeled a lot of her ideals off of them and then seeing that it wasn't great and in fact it was terrible in certain ways has turned her extremely jaded. She no longer believes in love, she no longer wants to try at love herself, and it's really shifted her worldview as a whole. So anyway, uh, she decides to donate all of her romance books and that kind of ends up making her stumble into um, this weird thing that starts happening to her where when she sees a couple kiss, she uh, gets visions of their romance. She sees their beginning, how they got together, she sees really Im uh, important moments for their relationship, and then she sees how they end. And those visions are just making her more and more jaded at how painful love is and how hopeless it is. But she can't shake off these visions, they're here to stay, so her friend recommends to her that she uh, just follows fate. Fate's clearly trying to do something to her for her, so she just needs to follow fate, which leads her to a dance studio, which leads her into a dance competition with this super cute guy named X. X has his own stuff that he's dealing with as well, but I'm not going to even touch on that because that doesn't get revealed till later, so it's not in the basic setup. I really, really enjoyed this. I think that it was adorable. I think that Nicola Yoon, this is my first book by her. I know that she's written other things that are really popular, but this is my first book by her. I think that the way she writes their chemistry is so cute, and it was so fun to read. She does such a great job, I think, in the first chapter of establishing that the story, what the story is going to be establishing who our main character is and the struggles that she has from the very beginning. In the, like, these chapters are really short, and in the very first chapter I was completely hooked on the story because I really relate to that mentality without going too deep into my personal life. I definitely didn't have any faith in lasting love when I met my husband, and I was very open with him about that, and, you know, we worked through it, and now I have a wonderful relationship. But her particular jadedness towards love and her struggles were were very familiar to me and something that I I related to right away and and was it was easy for me to follow her. Uh, I liked her as a character. Her friend group was cute and fun to hang out with and X was a great um, what do you call it when the leads other what's that called? Romantic interest. There it is. Love interest. Love interest. He was a great love interest. I really, really liked him. Both Evie and X are going through a lot in life. They have a lot of personal struggles that leads them to a lot of stuff that they have to work through. I really liked the way that they worked through this stuff, the way they talked through it. I liked their personal arcs and the decisions, really difficult decisions that they made in order to move forward. I think one complaint I have is that Sometimes I feel like these 18 year olds acted like they were written by an adult, which they were, but um, I think that the book needed more angst. And that's something that I've never said before in my life. I typically avoid angsty books, but these are 18 year olds that are dealing with really serious, like really honest, struggles that are impacting their lives and their behaviors and their perceptions of the world. And they handled it so maturely. <laughs> they, the way that they overcame the obstacles was so incredibly mature. And I, I mean, I'm reading about 18 year olds, not 15 year olds. So there is a level of maturity that should be there. I certainly, I do not look down on this age group, but 
I do think that the level of maturity, like there should have been more angst. I wanted the I wanted the growth that they had and the decisions that they made. I wanted that to be the end goal, but man, they got there fast. And I think that I think we could have used a little bit more in between. I mean, this book is, I think, like 285 pages. So we could have stretched out to maybe like 300 pages, added a little bit more angst, and then like, good. Which is weird because I don't want angst in my books, but I just feel like every time I was reminded, these are 18 year olds and they're just, they're just, they're so mature. And 18 year olds can be mature, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Like they needed a little bit more selfishness and inner turmoil before they got to where they got to, in my opinion. But like, that's like, that's not a real complaint. It's more like a nitpick that pulled me out of the story a little bit, but really didn't affect my enjoyment at all. I did really, really like this book a lot. I thought it was super cute. I thought it was a really fast, fun read that dealt with really honest topics really well and uh, dealt with them in a nuanced way. And I, I just really liked it. I definitely recommend it if it sounds interesting to you. Next we have The Humans by Matt Haig. So this is an adult sci-fi book and the setup for this is that our... Okay, well, l l okay, so the setup is this man, this human man named Andrew solved a very difficult equation that he spent his life trying to solve. And in that solution is something that could change the entire world. Also, there's aliens. And when he, when he reaches this discovery, the aliens decide, oh no, humans aren't ready for this level of advancement. Let's stop that. So they send one of their own to, um, well, they, they dispose of, 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 this human. And then this alien takes on his form and is is now living out his life. At first, he's real bad at it. He doesn't really know anything about humans at all, and he doesn't know how to impersonate them. He doesn't know their language, though he learns it very quickly. He doesn't understand why humans need to wear clothes, therefore he doesn't. And he doesn't understand basic humor, human mannerisms or conversational etiquette or anything. It starts out pretty bad, uh, but he learns. He's a fast learner and he starts to get it. So anyway, the, it's obviously a very comical book. There's humor on every page. There's jokes everywhere. A very dry sense of humor that uh, kind of does not take anything too seriously. Um, I really, really like it for the humor because it's hilarious, but then also because in that humor, there's also a very introspective tone throughout the entire book. At first, our lead alien is very critical of humanity. Why do they do things this way? They just do it because that's de been deemed acceptable, but there's no logic behind it. Why is this acceptable, but not that? Why, why do they choose this as the way they spend their time when it does X, Y, and Z to them? Why are they so fearful of of this, yet they act this way, you know? It, it kind of, it takes this very dense, distanced look at humanity and at the way people think and interact with life. And from that distanced perspective, it looks very critically on them. So it's a very introspective book where we're kind of removed from ourselves and we look more critically at ourselves. And it's one that, I mean, I really enjoyed a lot of his takes on humanity. But then part of his goal here on Earth is to find out who this human told about his discovery and then terminate those humans as well so that there's absolutely no risk of this being discovered at this point in history. So our lead kind of has to kill the family too and anyone else that may know about it. But the more time he spends on Earth trying to discover who knows about this thing, about this equation being solved, the more he gets very attached to his humans. He starts to no longer view them as this very disgusting creature with this ugly um, uh, protrusion from their face, the nose, or useless eyebrows, or like all these very critical ways that he looks at the basic setup of humans. And he starts to see the beauty in humanity. He starts to see, see the beauty in the mannerisms and the reasoning behind the way humans interact the way they do. He's still very curious, but he falls in love with his humans and he falls in love with his family and with Earth as a whole. It turns from this really critical eye of humanity to this lovingly critical eye. And it's 
it's it's silly it's funny it's a pretty interesting story i really especially in the beginning i was a little bit unsure about it but as he started to fall in love with his humans i fell in love with his humans and with him as well so it was it was a really it was a nice little story the humor was great and the introspection i think was really good as well it's definitely not a hard sci-fi kind of sci-fi it's more like i would say i would say it's kind of similar to um and andy ware Kind of like his humor and the way he he handles story. I would say if you're a fan of of like The Martian, which I haven't read, and uh, Project Hail Mary and things like that, then you would likely like The Humans as well. It's not like a Michael Creighton kind of sci-fi. I'm also not that experienced in the sci-fi genre either, so you know, take everything I say with a grain of salt. But that was how I enjoyed these two books. I really enjoyed both. I thought that both were a really fun experience. Neither one are new favorites for me, but they're both that I had a great time reading and I recommend both of them. Anyway, I'd love to chat with you more about these in the comments. Have you read them? Are you going to read them? What are your thoughts? If you want to discuss spoilers, make sure to do the spoiler space 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 thing so we don't accidentally spoil other people. Check out my Patreon if you feel like it. I'm there all the time. I post videos every Tuesday through Friday. I'll see you again soon. Bye.